Even on my day off, I have to meet our guests here. Greetings everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the fourth member of the Husbando Bandits, Azure Lord, Mung Jung. Mung Jung is a dual elemental DPS unit. He belongs to the Tian Yuan faction of characters and uses Divine Grace as the resource to execute his skills. Before we dive into his skills, we need to first understand the functionality of his dual elements. In battle, Meng Zhang will always enter the field in his still form. In this form, his basic attacks will deal wind damage, generate one Nei mark on hit, and grants a set amount of Divine Grace. His wind form is used primarily as a way to generate Divine Grace. Once his Divine Grace is full, he can enter his move form by using skill 3, changing his element to Thunder. In addition, any wind damage buff present upon entering his Thunder form will be converted into bonus Thunder damage. Likewise, any Thunder damage buff present when he reverts back to his wind form will be converted into bonus wind damage. His basic attack has five sequences and will generate a set amount of Divine Grace on hit. In addition, each successful hit will also generate up to four Nay marks. His dodge skill in still form will summon eight Jade Swords to attack the locked on target. Whilst in move form, it will grant an instance of Super Armor for skill two or skill three. The first time they are cast after the dodge skill is triggered. Skill one. Aero Ascent, in his still form, allows him to quickly leap back and cast two consecutive wind blades at the targets in front of him. Successful hits with this attack will generate a total of 30 Divine Grace. After casting Aero Ascent, its secondary form, Aero Dash, will become available. This attack will allow him to quickly close the gap on the target and deliver a piercing blow if he is in possession of Nay marks when this skill is cast, consume all marks, and for each mark consumed summon a Jade Sword to attack the lock on target. A successful hit with Aero Dash will grant him 10 Divine Grace. While in Thunder form, Aero Ascent is changed into Aero Break. Aero Break consumes 3 Divine Grace to deliver a quick blow to the enemy, dealing lightning damage. Casting this skill after skill 2 or skill 3 while in move form drastically reduces their cooldowns and allows him to weave together more powerful combos. Skill 2, Stillness in Motion, also has two forms. In still form, this ability will block all incoming damage on cast and summon multiple Jade Swords to attack the locked on target. While this skill is on cooldown successful hits with his normal attacks, will summon additional swords to attack the target. In addition, wind damage is increased by 0.4% and stacks up to 28 times. While in move form, this skill is changed into Stillness in Motion Thunder. Stillness in Motion Thunder expends 5 Divine Grace to deliver 2 consecutive blows dealing thunder damage. After this skill is cast, Skill 1 Aero Break can be weaved into it to perform an extended combo. Skill 3, Eternal Prosperity Wind, is used to enter his move form and can only be cast while his Divine Grace is full. On cast, Mung will quickly gather nearby enemies with his wind ability, before teleporting behind them delivering multiple strikes of lightning to the surrounding targets. After the skill is cast all Namarks will be removed and the skill's cooldown is reset. After entering the move form, Skill 3 is Change into Eternal Prosperity Thunder. Eternal Prosperity Thunder consumes 15 or all Divine Grace, if less, then 15 is present, to deal a powerful Thunder Strike using both Sword and Sheave, after which multiple Lightning Strikes will descend on the target. Eternal Prosperity Thunder can be extended using Aero Break. Once Divine Grace reaches zero, he will revert back to his still form. His ultimate, Dragon's Lunar Mansions, uses the power of wind and thunder to strike the enemy with a powerful lightning strike. If it is cast in still form, 
increases self-wind damage by 30% for 12 seconds, and if cast in move form, increases self-thunder damage by 30% for 12 seconds. If Cleansing Wind Enlil is in the party, their ultimate skill chain will decrease enemy lightning resistance by 20%, wind resistance by 10%, and increase the team's wind damage by 30% for 12 seconds. When self or teammates cast an ultimate, or when self switches stances, he gains 10% of his ultimate charge. Now that we have a better understanding of his abilities, it's time to formulate a game plan. We know he will always take the field in his still form, and we know his still form is used primarily to generate divine grace. So the goal is to obtain max divine grace as quickly as possible in order to enter move form. This is fairly easy to do. We'll begin our battle by casting skill 2 to summon our Jade Swords. Basic attack until you have 4 Ney Marks. From there, cast skill 1 base and secondary form, followed by a full rotation of our basic attacks. Cast skill 1 once more when it becomes available, and continue basic attacking. You should have max Divine Grace before skill 2's cooldown ends. Once you've gathered enough Divine Grace, you can enter Move Form by casting Skill 3. In Move Form, or his Thunder Form, things get a little more interesting. There are three things you need to keep in mind while in Move Form. 1. Skill 2 and Skill 3 are the main skills, with Skill 3 being our strongest ability, so all combos need to begin with the casting of either Skill 2 or Skill 3. 2. Skill 2 and Skill 3 cannot extend each other, so do not use Skill 2 as a follow-up to Skill 3, and likewise, don't use Skill 3 as a follow-up to Skill 2. Doing so will instantly send them into their respective cooldowns. Casting these two skills back-to-back -back in move form is essentially the equivalent of casting Tsukuyomi's Skill 3 on an enemy with no mark, except Mung's Skill 3 has a 20-second cooldown, so do keep that in mind. Lastly, Skill 1 is your combo extender and is the only skill you should cast after casting one of the main skills. After casting Skill 2, Skill 1 can be weaved in two times, and after casting Skill 3, Skill 1 can be weaved in up to four times. The guideline for combos are, numbers with no spaces means the skills need to be cast in quick succession. If a space is present, it means allow a short delay before casting the next skill. With that out of the way, the combo for his move form are as follow. You will be losing Divine Grace passively on blue code, so the timing can be a bit tight here, but practice makes perfect. Be sure to weave in basic attacks in both combos while your skills are on cooldown for optimal DPS. For Functors, Otherworld Zheng, always a great choice for those of the Tian Yuan faction. It will provide normal attack damage, skill damage, and ultimate damage, and has a very easy trigger requirement. His signature Functor, Otherworlder, Kui, will increase his wind damage increase the amount of bonus damage he gained from his passive's conversion, allow him to shred both wind and thunder resistance, and increase his crit rate and crit damage. It's recommended to prioritize wind, elemental bonus damage in your sigil enchantments, if you plan on using his signature functor. When it comes to ether codes, both blue and yellow are very close in damage. 
That being said, yellow is more flashy and has better neutral game damage in still form. Then blue code. It will allow you to summon additional attacks in the form of lightning strikes after your jade swords hits a target. While in move form, your combos will also trigger a wind field to deal additional damage and will grant up to 20% bonus damage. Yellow code is recommended for those using his signature functor, but it's also viable for those using the free-to-play option. Three blues will allow you to gain Divine Grace on Jade Sword hits 10 seconds after switching to the still form. Increase skill damage by 35% in move form, and increase attack by up to 28% when weaving combos in move form. Although this path gives a lot of bonus damage, I personally find Yellow Code to be more consistent and has the better damage output even while using the free-to-play functor at double S rank. Red Code is exclusively a Divine Grace support line, and unless you're in a team that needs more Divine Grace, you can safely ignore it. The new set Ashen Dragon of the Desolate Sea is tailor-made to make use of his dual element nature. It will increase wind damage by 10% after a lightning attack hits. The mod's crit rate is increased by 15%. Increase instantaneous lightning damage by 7%. When lightning attacks hit. And finally, increase instantaneous wind damage by 7% when wind attacks hits. So slot this set into slots 1, 3 and 5. Acheron's Obol is a great choice for slots 2, 4 and 6. This will provide you with up to 9% bonus attack in wind form and up to 36% crit damage in thunder form. These effects can temporally overlap, but the window for it is pretty tight since he can only gain divine grace in wind form and consume it in thunder. Our second option for slots 2, 4 and 6 is Night Owl's Raid. This set can increase melee attack damage by 10%, skill damage by 5% and basic attack damage by 15%. For enhancements, if you have his signature functor, you can prioritize bonus wind elemental damage since every 1% wind damage you'll get gets converted into 1.1% thunder damage. The higher your functor transcendence, the greater the gains from this conversion. Apart from that, do not use any bonus thunder damage enchantments. Instead, go for attack, skill damage, crit rate, and crit damage. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots one and two, we want two power up melee and two Executioners. The two melee mods because we do rely heavily on our melee attacks in wind form. And the two Executioners for a 18% damage buff against enemies at 40% HP or lower. For slots 3 and 4 use 2, Telepathize Force Field 1, and 2, EM Flux, if you can keep your HP above 70% in battle. If you can, use 2 Savage instead. Savage has the highest damage buff but requires you to be at low HP. For slots 5 and 6 we want 2 Evolution Particle 3 and 2 Telekinesis Vector 3. Skill 3 is our bread and butter, so increasing its maximum level and base damage will greatly increase our overall damage output. This one is going to hurt my Oceanus mains a little, but his most common team comp does require Enlil to be present. Enlil will be on red code and running 3-piece Nibel to battery their ultimate. If you want to give them an even greater boost, Add two unfetters to Enlil to make sure that skill chain is always ready when you need it. The third slot can be filled by Hera for raw damage on blue code or Lingguang for the damage buff, shields, heals and the gen zone bonus on red code. This comp can also drop Ling and Hera for Luliang on red code, but she isn't out yet for you guys, so put her on your wish list. Of course, his most premium team requires you to go full Tian Yuan making use of both Ling and Gengchan on red code. Gengchan will drop next patch for you guys, so add her to that wish list as well. This comp is as deadly as it seems. Single target encounters can be covered by both Mung and Ling. And multi-target encounters are pretty much trivialized by Gengchan, allowing you to cover any scenarios. 
You can also make use of your Kotachi and Bastet combo with him since they can armor break, and their ultimate skill chain shreds both wind and thunder resistance. In closing, Azure Lord Mung Jang emerges as a captivating character and a welcomed member of the Husbando Bandits. From his appearance that undoubtedly resonates with Sasuke Uchiha fans, to his dynamic and at times complex skill set, which strikes a perfect balance between flashiness and functionality, providing an experience reminiscent of traditional fighting games like Tekken or Soul Calibur. He does present a small challenge to those who have become well acquainted with the Ungabunga nature of some of the modifiers in the roster, but it's an enjoyable experience nonetheless. In essence, Azure Lord Meng Jiang stands as a testament to the skill and creativity of Ethergazer's dev team. Something I sure we all hope we'll see more of moving forward. Sate, chacha to warase yo. Kore mo sate no uchi sa, mieta. Ima no atakata wa. Mieta. お前たちの死ぬ場所が今決まった。見えた。稽古にもならんな。さて、帰って昼寝でもするか。<笑><笑>